Miles, what's going on, man? Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Um, when you look back on last season, what are some things that you're most proud of and, and what are some things you wish you could have done better, man? Um, I'm just proud of uh, how we finished as a team. Uh, I was proud of how I handled my recovery uh, of my injury, uh, just missing a couple of games. Um, just just kind of how I finished and just kind of for myself coming in this next season, just working on staying healthy as much as I can. I know I, I missed a few games with, with my knee and uh, COVID. Uh, just just being able to – just missing those games kind of hurt, uh, hurt myself, just kind of hurt the team and hurt myself in my own eyes. So just trying to work on staying healthy, trying to take care of my body, trying to like work on a lot of things so things don't come up during the season. Oh, um, Miles, I wanted to ask you this question. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're aware of your production level, but if you hadn't gotten hurt and hadn't caught COVID, you realize you would have been like the fourth most productive player in the NFL at your present pace. Did you know that or? Um, I had heard things like that, but I mean, I guess it's like a compliment, but like I wasn't, so you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, I mean, uh, I, I liked how I was playing, but I did miss those games and that is not, that's not a factual statement. You know what I'm saying? You never know what happens in those games. So I appreciate that just kind of being brought to life. But I mean, that's my point of being healthy all this year as much as I can. Obviously football is football, things happen, but just trying to do as much as I can to make sure my body is able to go through a 17 plus game season with the playoffs. So. What 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 is the things that you can do to that can help a back be more durable? I work on knee health, ankle health, things like that. Work on stability, just being more like sure. Just work on those small muscles. I did a lot of Pilates when I back when I went back home to Seattle, and I think that helped my body. Just uh, working on those small muscles, working on like awkward movements, and uh, moving your body. Like I said, moving your body awkwardly. Just just new things I haven't done in the past. I think that would take my next, my game to the next step. Josh. <laughs> hey, my good to see you. <laughs> I like the background. Yeah, yeah. Hope you hope you've been having a good offseason, man. Sorry. Uh, it's, it seems like uh, you know, Tracy Ford has meant a lot to you and the people at his gym. Um, could you uh just kind of explain what he's meant to you um over the past couple of years, specifically, you know, this offseason coming off your best year and you know, like what you you said, the training magic regimen with your health and, and just everything he's meant to you. Um, absolutely. Um I've known Tracy since I was what, 15 years old. I've been training with him every every opportunity I've had every time I'm in Washington. And uh he's been more, he's obviously been a trainer, helped me with my football. But he's been a real big mentor for myself, just kind of being around a lot of guys that have been that have been in the league. He knows a lot of guys at the Seahawks, like Bobby and KJ. So he's been around a lot of top shelf players, two Hall of Famers in my eyes, just being from Seattle, watching Bobby and KJ play. And uh, he just kind of coaches me up on how I need to how I need to work when it's the offseason, like what you should be doing right after the season, what you should be doing like right before OTA is not necessarily I feel like. In my in my younger years, especially in college, uh, I'll be working out in like February, like I was gonna play a game on Saturday. You know what I'm saying in college. Um, but uh, just kind of teaching me, showing me those ropes on uh, how to treat your body as a professional, how to be a professional, and things like that. It definitely helped me last year. Uh, and uh, going into this year, we talk every day, talk about what I need to be doing. He gives me workouts all the time. So yeah, man, that's that's my dog. I appreciate it. And if I could just follow up on uh, one quick on that, obviously, you know, Savan has meant a, a lot to, you know, both of you guys in the relationship. What, what do it mean to have him kind of by your side throughout this past off season, as you've had, uh, you know, the years prior at, at Tracy's gym? I mean, it means everything. Um, just, just having a, a brother with you at all times and then having a guy to compete with. I mean, obviously we best friends off the field, but definitely when we compete, like we'd be going back and forth, he'll win some, I'll win some, we'll get mad at each other. Like the other day we was racing, I didn't even feel like I had lost a few. I didn't even feel like talking to him on the ride back. I was sitting in the car just silent. I was so mad. So, I mean, just having somebody to compete with, especially having like a real friend to compete with, talk about the playbook with, all that type of stuff. Like we'd be quizzing each other at dinner and stuff like that. So it's cool, man. Adam? Uh, yeah, you, it was important for you to be back for these uh, voluntary workouts flew across country to, to, to be a part of it. Why uh, did you think that it was the, your best interest to be here this week uh, as opposed to what the NFLPA was asking the membership to do? Uh, I'll just 
speak for myself. Uh, I just need to get up out of Seattle, to be honest. Uh, Florida, Florida's Florida. So, I mean, everything's open and uh, just the weather. I mean, I got an apartment here. I ain't trying to just, you know what I'm saying? I ain't paying an apartment not to stay there. So I have my, my other reasons for myself uh, and obviously help. Help me learn the playbook, be on site. I, I mean, we got everything you need here, but there is a definitely a mix of football and just trying to get it up. I, I was living in my parents' house, so you know, you know how that goes. It's cool and all, but until they want you to clean up the bathroom or something. So, <laughs> and a follow up, if I may, how was the turnout today? How many of you all were there? Uh, it was good. I mean, it was a good amount of us. Uh, I think I think a lot of guys. It was good to. I know we've been having these uh, Zoom meetings, so it was good for guys. I think guys were excited to get out there to walk through it. I mean, it was very slow paced, but just just getting in that huddle, just having somebody call a play is different than just like reading off flashcards or sitting in this type of setting in a Zoom setting. So it, was, it, it felt good. Thank you. Hey, how you doing, Miles? How you doing? Yeah. You mentioned earlier competition. I'm curious. The Dolphins had a lot of draft capital heading into this year's draft. They had a couple of first round picks and second round picks, and there were some really good backs who were coming out this year. As yeah. someone who's trying to make a name for himself on the Dolphins, was that something that you were mindful of? Did you want them maybe to go out and get a big back, or was that something that you just kind of ignored? Um, above my pay grade. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, obviously, whatever they do upstairs is what they do upstairs. Um, Whoever we bring in, I know it's going to be the best for the team. I don't think a drafting a back or bringing in a back is going to change anything for me. I'm, I'm trying to compete with myself, compete with others, obviously, but definitely compete with myself, make sure I'm the best running back I can be come the end of July whenever camp starts and then leading up into the season. So I don't think uh, bringing on anybody changes my routine. Uh, I'm excited for the guys that did get drafted just being – I mean, a couple of years ago, I was in the same spot. So, I mean, I watched the draft with just excitement for people, but – I mean, whoever we draft, I was just excited to have him on the team. So, Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. This is sort of along those same lines, but I am curious if the fact that they, the Dolphins did not spend a high draft pick on a running back, if you maybe take that as a vote of confidence in what you can do, and at the same time, did you hear any of the talk before the draft that Miami, quote unquote, needs a running back. Is that maybe another slight toward you, which I know you're kind of used to your whole career? Um, uh, for, I mean, not really. I mean, I mean, I see you see your stuff on Instagram. You get tagged on things on Instagram. I try my best to stay off of that, but. I mean, I don't, I don't find my confidence in what anybody else say, whatever it may be. I, I find my confidence in myself. So, I mean, it, I mean, it is what it is. Whoever going to be out there, they got to play just as much as anybody else. So, it is what it is. Joe? Hey, Miles, good to see you. Um, you mentioned earlier getting into the playbook and with Eric and George being promoted to co-offensive coordinators, I'm curious how, how much – is is change? Uh, I feel like for the running backs that were here, myself, uh, Pat, um, Savon, uh, just kind of seeing the playbook, it has changed. It's much different than last year's, but us being around E, you kind of see him, you see his offensive mind sit, sitting in the room with him. You see his offensive mind kind of clicking, kind of moving. So I felt like me, Pat, Sav kind of had a good, not, not that we understood what it was going to be, but what it was going to look like, if that makes sense, uh, coming in and uh, just being able to kind of get the terms and stuff like that down now. Obviously, it's super early, still the first one, so it's just like very basic stuff. But just kind of seeing what E's input has been on it, along with George, how they came to bring one offense together, I think uh, obviously surprised with some things, um, excited for some things, but at a at – at the same time, I've been around E for a while, so I know what he, he likes and what he wants things to look like. So, yeah. What do you feel like the point of emphasis is going to be? What are those two guys driving home on all the meetings? What do they say over and over again? Uh, See, it's still early. He's just getting lined up, get set, know where he's supposed to be, know the formations. It's super basic right now. Just like, I mean, like I said, it was a walk through today. So just know where you're going to be. That's where it starts. You can't, you can't run a play if you don't know where to line up. So it's day one. So it's early. Thanks. Of course. We got time for two more, Omar and then Travis. 
you, you talked about with E knowing what he wants and what he likes. Is that just from being in the meeting rooms with him and knowing his his style and 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 what he flavors and how much different was it than what you guys ran last year? Uh definitely just being in the room with him so you know what he wants you know his terminology I think that's kind of like the biggest thing from coach to coach a lot of coaches call the same thing or have the same thing but just call it different wording around it just especially when you're watching film um but uh it, it's definitely different it's a whole new playbook it's it's not the same as last year's but it's not I mean like I said it's still early still picking it up so I mean I think everybody's just very open-minded and just kind of just soaking it all in right now so yeah Last one, Travis. Hey, Miles. Good to see you again, man. And kind of continuing that theme here of questions about, you know, comfortability and stuff. You you saw a big jump last year in terms of playing time and then production as well. I'm wondering at what point for you did kind of the experience of playing the position in the NFL kind of start to be recognizable for you? Like, when did the game kind of start to slow down? And do you kind of see that continuing going into year three? Uh, Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, When the game starts slowing down, uh... Uh, I don't know, maybe the Buffalo game, the first time we played Buffalo uh, in Miami. Um, but just just more reps, just more playing. I mean, obviously, it just keeps slowing, slowing down, and you learn new things and just kind of how to play the game. Uh, I think that was just my biggest my biggest jump each week was just kind of like eye-opening to, hey, I need to do this this week to be successful, or I need to be looking for this. So obviously it slows down, but I think it's it's each week is its own new task. So whenever you can master your, I guess for me, it's always like put away whatever you, whoever you played Sunday, you got to learn a whole new team. So you know what I'm saying? So I guess, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there. I guess one of my, my main purpose of the question is if you look at where you were year one, your rookie season, like going into the year in May that year compared to where you are now, how would you compare those two, those two times of your career? Um, I'm better, I guess, just, just more better in the mind, better, just physically, just, just ready to go. I, I know, I know what I'm looking for. I know it. Uh, I know that my strengths and I know my weaknesses and I'm trying to get those all the strengths and even my strengths even stronger. So, I think I just have more of a focus on what I feel like when I first came in, I, I was just wide eyed and just trying to get better. I just want to get better, but not saying or not really focus on what I wanted to get better at, if that makes sense, you know.